Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a really easy method of water cooling your graphics card. Specifically, we're going to be using the NZXT Kraken G10. This is basically a universal liquid cooling adapter that will basically work for a number of different all-in-one water cooling solutions from all the different manufacturers, as you can see on the screen. And it'll work for most of the modern day uh, GPUs that are currently available. Now, what we're going to be specifically water cooling is the PNY gtx 980 ti this is one of the most powerful single gpus that you can get right now and in terms of liquid cooler we're going to be using the corsair h105 this is a dual 120 millimeter radiator configuration so it should give us plenty of heat dissipation and should give us a huge edge up when it comes to the overclock now in terms of tools all you're going to really need is a screwdriver set and depending upon if your uh, cooler came with some thermal compound you might need that as well now when you get the kraken g10 you basically get the main GPU bracket, a backplate, a fan, as well as some screws and foam pads to kind of put everything together. Now the first thing that we want to do is just prep our uh, GPU. So we're going to remove the stock cooler on our 980 Ti and we can basically do this by removing all of the bottom end screws and our cooler should theoretically lift up pretty nicely. Once the cooler is off you can go ahead and unplug all the power connections for your fan and LED lights. And once we have everything exposed we should probably clean off some of the thermal compound on the processor by just using a clean cloth and some rubbing alcohol. Next we can start working on assembling our bracket and what we're going to do is basically install the fan for cooling off uh, some of our RAM compartments on our graphics card and we're going to set it for intake and you can secure it via four Phillips head screws. After that we can stick on the foam pads that will rest right against the GPU so everything is nice and comfortably secure. Moving right along we're going to grab our back plate and insert the long GPU screws through the applicable holes appropriate for your graphics card. Now most of the NVIDIA graphics card will fit in the C position. Then you can use the nuts to secure each of those long screws to the interior portion of that backplate. Once completed you can take that whole backplate assembly and pass it right through the bottom end of the graphics card. Now we're ready to install our liquid cooling pump to the bracket itself and the way you're going to do it is by taking the pump and uh, put it right through the bracket itself and then you're going to rotate until it aligns with the teeth and then you're going to pull the pump against the bracket. At this point if needed you can uh, place a small amount of thermal compound on the surface of the processor and then you can gently uh, drop down the uh, bracket uh, slash uh, pump assembly right onto the processor and then you're going to tighten it with the uh, provided nuts just by hand and you want to make sure everything is evenly and securely tightened because this is basically how uh, your pump is going to fit onto your graphics card. Now that's pretty much it for the graphics card assembly Assembly, you can basically now install the graphics card and radiator into your system and make sure to plug in the power connections for the uh, graphics card pump and fan. Essentially with this water cooling configuration there's many benefits. Certainly we can push our overclock a little bit further. We're limited in terms of how much voltage we can throw at this particular graphics cards but there are other GTX 980 Ti's that are a little bit better when it comes to extreme overclocking but even with the specific card that we have we're easily able to achieve a 1500 megahertz overclock on the core clock frequency that's about 500 more megahertz from the stock configuration and the memory clock can be easily configured up to 8 uh, gigahertz which is pretty darn impressive with a voltage just set to under 1.2 volts now of course when it comes to temperatures you're going to find a massive benefit to our particular system compared to the stock cooler configuration uh, both in terms of idle and especially when it comes to a low temperature you're finding a significant difference between the two basically on the water cooling side it never went past 56 degrees celsius and on the stock cooler uh, loading up uh, the uh, heaven benchmark it uh, jumped up to 78 degrees c which is a pretty big difference and of course when it comes to the acoustics the stock cooler is pretty darn loud especially if you load up the gpu versus uh, you're gonna find that the water cooling solution is ideal for more quieter setups now, in terms of the performance performance gains there's not going to be a massive uh, performance jump up from uh, basically the stock cooler because again we're limited in terms of our voltage capacities but even with the uh, more efficient cooling system you're going to find a small benefit uh, basically you're looking at the difference over here on uh, heaven benchmark uh, set to ultra settings uh, eight times aa at 1080p you're looking at average fps score about 97.2 on the liquid cooler and with the stock cooler we get about 95.5 
five, all, both on the overclock settings and on stock GPU uh, frequencies. You're looking at a score of about 82.3 average frames per second. So a huge difference between stock and overclock settings. And certainly with an overclocked water cooling uh, GPU, it's going to last longer, run more efficiently and quieter compared to the stock cooling solution. So definitely highly recommend a setup like this if you want to uh, edge up uh, your uh, GPU and your gaming performance to the next level and don't want to go with a custom water cooling loop and uh, this is a great solution if you have an older all-in-one liquid cooler lying around this is a great solution I actually have an older H50 from Corsair that works uh, kind of nicely with this setup and it has a single radiator configuration so it could be used in a more compact fashion than this dual 120 we have uh, been using for this test but uh, certainly there's lots of flexibility check in the description down below for compatible coolers again but really other than that guys that's really it now one thing i have to mention is we actually have a kind of epic build coming up with this uh, water cooled uh, gtx 980 ti and using an unlocked core i7 6700k processor that's also been water cooled in a very compact and stylish pc case from nzxt the manta so uh, definitely be on the lookout for that build guide coming up very very soon but really other than that thanks again for watching we'll see you later take care